TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel has officially opened its school year today with roughly 2.4 million Israeli pupils from kindergarten up to 12th grade attending their first school day amid prevalent concerns related to rising numbers of COVID cases. The Israeli Navy was joined by the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, or NAVSENT, for first combined maritime security patrol, which also includes joint maneuvers in Israel's most southern Red Sea. At least eight people were wounded when the Iranian-backed Houthi militia in Yemen conducted yet another drone strike on the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Abha International Airport. Israel has officially opened its school year today with roughly 2.4 million Israeli pupils from kindergarten up to 12th grade attending their first day of school amid prevalent concerns related to rising numbers of COVID cases. In a coordinated effort to open the school year unhindered, the government enacted a series of measures hoping to avert the corona contagion spread, including a minimum vaccination rate of 70% for grades 8 to 12, alongside regulations for grades 5 to 7, who have been instructed to observe a so-called reduced contact curriculum. In tandem, all children were also asked to be tested ahead of today. So yesterday, the day before the first day, all of the kids in our school uh, performed the quick test, the antigen test. Uh, they need to bring the test result to us in order to start the school year. It's not mandatory, but it's something that we ask the parents to collaborate with us. So hopefully we can start the year with everybody being uh, healthy and safe and throughout the year to be honest i'm not really sure we just have to go with the flow it is worth mentioning that in light of the government enacted regulations and recommendations approximately 150,000 students in the 8th to 12th grades in cities that are classified as red are forced to learn remotely because they do not meet the education and health ministry's guidelines for at least 70% of a class to be vaccinated, and an additional 100,000 students are currently in quarantine. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett attended the first day of a first grade class in the town of Yerucham. <laughs> אנחנו פתחנו שנת לימודים היום, כל ילדי ישראל עברו בדיקות ואנחנו נעשה מאמץ גדול כדי שהשנה הזאת תצליח בלימודים ובכלל במדינת ישראל. Earlier this morning, ahead of the opening of the school year, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz visited the Joint Situation Room of the IDF Home Front Command and the Health and Education Ministries which are tasked with coordinating and executing a wide-scale campaign for inoculating Israeli pupils from grades 8 to 12. I'm in the process of the Joint Security Force, the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Health, which is opened for the year of the year, in order to reduce the effects of the vaccine and the loss of the children. Here, it appears that everything is broken, and to protect our children in a full and full way between the systems. Here is the place to thank all of them and to all of them who have been able to do the work of the year of the year of the year of the year. גם באמצעות אריזה ושליחת ערכות בדיקה לכלל בתי הספר, מבצע לוגיסטי מורכב וכן בסיוע בכל מאמצים נוספים. כל זאת מתוך ראייה שהחינוך הוא אכן משימה לאומית. Turning to Israel's southern front with the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, where clashes erupted last night between Palestinian rioters and IDF forces along the border's security barrier. During the clashes, which included dozens of improvised explosive devices being hurled toward the Israeli troops who responded with crowd control measures, at least three Palestinians were reportedly wounded, drawing new threats by the Islamist Hamas organization, which vowed to expand the protests to the entire length of the border security barrier with Israel. Despite the violence directed at Israel, however, the IDF coordinator of government activities in the territories announced this morning 
that there would be additional measures to ease conditions in the Gaza Strip pending a decision by the political echelon in Jerusalem. Among others, Palestinian fishermen will be permitted to fish up to 50 nautical miles and imports to the Gaza Strip via the Kerem Shalom crossing will be expanded. With that being said, sources in Jerusalem reiterated to TV7 that improving the lives of the residents of the Gaza Strip depends solely on the Islamist Hamas, which must cease any terror activities toward Israeli residents and territory. Moving farther south to the Red Sea, where the Israeli Navy was joined by the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, or NAVSENT, for a first combined maritime security patrol, which also included joint maneuvers in Israel's most southern sea. The Joint Security Patrol, which is the first time Israeli and U.S. Navy vessels sailed together in the commonly referred to Gulf of Aqaba, since the U.S. Defense Department transferred Israel from the U.S. European Command to the U.S. Central Command's area of responsibility after Jerusalem normalized its relations with a number of Arab capitals. According to Captain Robert Francis, who serves as Commodore for Navsense Task Force 55, which controls U.S. Navy surface assets in the Middle East, quote, The collaboration has been tremendous. We share a common understanding with our international counterparts that there is strength in unity. He further underscored that combined patrols like these help maintain regional maritime security and stability. Turning now to Saudi Arabia, where at least eight people were wounded earlier this week when the Iranian-backed Houthi militia in Yemen conducted yet another drone strike on the kingdom's Abha International Airport. كان في استهداف اليوم في هذا اليوم أغسطس تم اعتراض من قبل الجهات الأمنية ولدينا عدد ثمانية إصابات واحدة إصابة خطيرة ثلاثة إصابات متوسطة وعدد أربع إصابات خضراء طفيفة جميع الإصابات متواجدة في تم علاجها وتم تلقيها الرعاية الطبية اللازمة طبعا أخي الكريم الأضرار المادية مثل ما أنت شايف فيه عدة أضرار مادية ولكنها لا أسميها أضرار كبيرة أضرار the deliberate strike on the civilian airport by the Iranian proxy comes less than a day after the Houthis claimed responsibility for an attack that reportedly killed 30 soldiers and wounded at least 60 others at a military installation that is manned by the Saudi-led coalition. In a retaliatory response to those attacks, the Saudi Royal Air Force has been engaged in multiple aerial sorties striking at Houthi military installations throughout the war-torn country of Yemen. It is worth mentioning that the growing aggression by the Iranian proxy militia in Yemen comes merely a number of days after the newly appointed Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian called on Saudi Arabia to open a new chapter in their bilateral relations. Separately, at a special summit hosted by Iraq, which was attended by several Middle Eastern leaders and French President Emmanuel Macron, the Ayatollah regime's top diplomat, whose country controls a number of powerful Shiite militias that do its bidding on Iraqi soil, voiced cynical pleasure at the Baghdad central government's bid to have all foreign forces leave Iraq. <laughs> خروج القوات العسكرية والأجنبية وإقامة الانتخابات المبكرة وترحب وترحب ثانية بالدور البناء لهذه البلاد في إشاعة في إشاعة ثقافة الحوار وعلاقات التعاون الإقليمي. In apparent response to the statement by the Iranian Foreign Minister. His Saudi counterpart Faisal bin Farhan al Saud made a cynical comment of his own in which he commended the efforts of the Iraqi government to take control of weapons that are in the hands of armed militias, Iranian proxies that had blatantly refused to comply. <laughs> تضافر كافة الجهود الدولية لتحقيق ذلك ومن منطلق التزام المملكة ومبدأه الراسخ في مكافحة الإرهاب والتطرف بجميع أشكاله 
ومظاهره ومظاهره واساليبه وحيث وجد تستمر المملكه بالتعاون والتنسيق مع العراق والدول الشريكه في المنطقه لمواجهه خطط التطرف والارهاب اللذان يهددان دول المنطقه والعالم وتدعم جهود العراق بالتعاون مع التحالف الدولي للتصدي لبقايا تنظيم داعش الارهابي كما تثمن المملكه جهود الحكومه العراقيه في السيطره على السلاح المنفلت بايدي الميليشيات المسلحه While regional and global powers are exploiting the weakness of the Baghdad central government, Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadimi is seemingly making every effort to maneuver his way for the sake of reconstructing his war-torn country. <laughs> وأصدقائنا في كل العالم ولمسنا حماسة كبيرة على مستوى رغبة الجميع في دعم هذا الاتجاه ونعترف في العراق ونعترف أن هناك بعض التحديات في مجال تسهيل الاستثمارات ولكن نعمل من خلال الإجراءات الحكومية والإصلاحات الاقتصادية لتجاوز هذا التحدي Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the people of Singapore in prayer for their salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hessen wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.